Howdy YouTube. I was checking out a pretty cool video over on the Garage Woodworks channel the other day. Uh, Brian was making a picture frame with some splines in the corners to reinforce it. The whole thing came out really, really well. You should check that out for sure. And down in the comments, someone asked a pretty good question. Uh, he was asking, why specifically did you choose to use the dado stack to make the rabbit on the inside of the picture frame, as opposed to two cuts with a straight blade or using the router table? I left some general thoughts on the subject, but it's a good enough question that I figured, what the heck, let's cut uh, a couple of test boards here and run through those three processes for cutting rabbits and see you know, which one comes out the best. If we're gonna play a game, we're gonna need some rules. Rule number one is the material is gonna be the same for all three of the rabbiting operations. This is what passes for three quarter inch ply at the home center. Uh, it's obviously not quite three quarters of an inch thick, but that's okay. We're gonna cut a three eighths inch rabbit in the edge of it anyway. These pieces are a little over 16 inches long and a little under eight inches wide. So part of this is gonna be to find out, well, how long does it actually take to perform the cutting operations in stock this size? Next rule is that we're gonna cut the same four rabbits in all three pieces using all three methods, assuming that we can. What do I mean by that? Well, the board's obviously got four sides and there are really four kinds of rabbits. There are stopped rabbits, there are through rabbits, and there are cross grain and long grain cuts. So I'm gonna make one of each. I'm gonna make a stopped rabbit on both a short and long edge, and I'm gonna make a through rabbit on both a short and long edge. And when we get to the end, we'll try and draw some conclusions about speed, safety, cut quality, and all of those things, which will probably lead us nowhere, but uh, hopefully it's fun, so let's get to cutting. First up on the hit parade is the router table. For me, that means getting my fence set up since my router lift is integrated into a table saw wing. Then it's time to get the bit. Now, I have a router bit that cuts rabbits of various sizes, which means I gotta go find the right bearing and, and get it onto the bit, which isn't always an easy operation because that bit is sharp and the screw self tightens. However, once it's all set up, it's pretty accurate 3 eighths of an inch. And then the router lift makes the rest of the setup fairly fast and easy. I can set zero by making sure my router bit is flush with the tabletop, and all I have to do is count cranks to set the height. Once the bit's in place, I set the fence to be even with the front of the bearing on the bit, which by the way, it turns out you don't even need the fence because of this bearing. So if you have to do this whole operation with a hand router, don't let it uh, put you off. It's gonna work just as well. Guides in place, vacuum set up, and it's time to start cutting the through rabbits. Those are of course the easiest ones. You just push them through the bit. For the stopped rabbits, I need marks that tell me where the bit cuts so that I can push the wood in and then pull it out before I cut too much of it. Total router table time was 13 minutes and 20 seconds for cuts and setup. Next, I'm going to do the two cut method on the table saw. It starts by getting the blade height set to exactly 3 eighths of an inch. When it just grazes the square, it's there. And then likewise, the fence needs to be exactly 3 eighths of an inch. If this is really critical, run a test piece and check it on the resulting wood, but the way I'm doing it here is going to be fine for test purposes. The through rabbits are no problem, you just run them straight through. For the uh, stopped rabbits, however, I need some marks, and then I have to drop the wood down onto the spinning table saw blade. Total time here was only 7 minutes 25 seconds, with that big asterisk because I didn't cut the cross grain stopped rabbit. I just didn't feel it was safe given the shape of the piece. Dado stack is the last method we're going to use, so again we're back to having some setup time. I have to take out the regular blade and put in the dado stack. 3 eighths of an inch only requires one chipper, but I'm putting in two to make sure that I get the full width cut. We're going to use a sacrificial fence to line this thing up for the right width anyway, so exact width of the dado stack itself doesn't really matter that much. I also am going to need some lines to tell me where this thing starts and stops cutting for the stopped dados. The through rabbits, of course, just push right on through the blade. But again, for the stopped ones, I have to drop the wood down onto the spinning blade and start and stop where the marks are. However, unlike the two cut method, with the dado blade, this is a pretty safe operation because the wood is laying flat. Total time for setup and cuts with this method, nine minutes and 17 seconds. Well, that was interesting, but of course we're not done. The stopped rabbits in all three cases need some additional work with a chisel, file, saw, something to clean out the corners and, and bring them out to their ends. So here's an example of one of the router table stopped dados. 
the radius on this corner is the same as the radius on the router bit, which is obviously quite a lot smaller than the radius of the table saw blade. So only this tiny little bit of corner needs to be removed on the ends of each of those stopped rabbits. Contrast that with the dado blade cut. We have a corner to remove here as well, but it starts clear back here and runs all the way to the end. And actually what we're removing is along here. So it's significantly more material to chop out and it's kind of a kind of a hard way to work on the wood. You can't really let it sit flat on the bench and chop it. You're gonna have to do this in the vise. And the two cut method doesn't even break the strip of uh, scrap material free. I still have to come in here and cut this and I actually have to cut it on both directions. And what I have to hog out underneath there is about halfway between what the router leaves and what the dado stack leaves. Okay, I went ahead and chopped out one of all three of these. This is the uh, dado stack. This is the two cut method. And this one right here is the router. Pretty much as we suspected, the router is the least amount of material to remove. Now, as it turns out, surprisingly, the dado stack one uh, was actually the easiest to work with the chisel but that was blind dumb luck. Uh, it's because I was cutting a 3 8 dado in 3 quarter inch plywood that isn't really 3 quarter inch plywood. And so the bottom where the bulk of the, the chisel work had to go uh, happened to be right exactly on the seam of two plies. Speaking of that 3 8 of an inch from an accuracy standpoint, it's worth noting that the router bit unsurprisingly is exactly three eighths of an inch in from the edge. And uh, actually, as it turns out, it's exactly three eighths of an inch down from the top, which is a function of the router lift. Um, if you're setting this up you know, by hand in a hand router, then you're gonna have whatever variation you have there. My two cut method is spot on in depth and it looks like I had my fence about a, oh, I don't know, a 30 second fat 32nd of an inch off. I mean, again, you could set that as accurately as you want by making a couple test cuts. The data is about the same on the width. It's off about a 32nd. And uh, for whatever reason, I came up short on the depth. I'm a, I'm a good 16th short of where I'm supposed to be for my 3 8 inch depth. The safety of all of this stuff is a really personal kind of a decision. Uh, some people are very comfortable dropping wood onto a spinning table saw blade. Other people wouldn't do it on a bet. Some are gonna argue that the router table is the safest way to do this, just full stop, that the table saw is always a dangerous thing, and there's a case to be made for that. For what I'm comfortable with, for the through rabbits, it doesn't make a whole lot of difference, but on the stopped rabbits, uh, the router table is clearly the easiest thing to control. In fact, as I noted earlier, I didn't even cut the stopped rabbit on the short end of the, the piece where I was doing the two cut methods because I did not feel comfortable bringing down, you know, this tall but skinny board and being confident that it was going to stay pressed up against the fence and square and not kick back on me. What's the upshot of all of this? Well, like most things in woodworking, it's a your mileage may vary scenario. I personally like the two cut method with the standard blade on the table saw. It's fast, it's as accurate as you need it to be, just take the time to set the blade height and the fence, and it will hog away a lot of material without turning it all to dust. But then if I think back on it, 99% of the rabbits I've ever made were for a picture frame where a through rabbit was just fine because I was mitering the corners. In the cases where you need the stopped rabbit, I'm thinking the router table is probably your go-to tool. How much of a pain it is to set up is gonna vary based on your shop setup, and how much material you're gonna have to remove in the corners of those rabbits is a function of the diameter of your bit. But in the end, I feel like the router table gives you the best control when it comes to starting and stopping a piece in the middle of the blade. And while it's possible on the table saw, it just never feels like a safe thing to do. Not to mention that the router leaves by far the best surface on wood like plywood. Now, if you're working with real wood, this probably isn't going to matter so much, but the high speed cutter on the, on the router does a much better job of leaving a smooth finish on uh, the garbage that passes for plywood at the big box centers these days. So that's my verdict. Two cut method for rabbits that go all the way through and the router table for stopped rabbits and any rabbit where the cut quality is of the utmost importance.
But the reality is that all three of these methods get the job done, and they're not even the only three. There's got to be dozens of ways to cut rabbits. So for you, in your shop, do what you want. If you're getting results that make you happy, then you're doing it right. There's nothing like a completely unscientific and opinionated comparison of woodworking methods to gin up comments, so leave those down below. While you're down there, think about hitting that subscribe button so you don't miss the next time that I go completely out of my mind. And while you're doing all that, stay safe, YouTube.